possibly the most anticipated death of all time. Around the globe, people, people were dancing. They were throwing up hands, shaking, jiving to the news that Ruth Bader Ginsburg has died. Uh, passed, passed away, I guess, uh, to cancer, which is not very pleasant, but... <clears throat> I, don't know. I guess some people would say she deserved it. I would. I don't. The thing is, I don't know enough about Ruth Bader Ginsburg to even like comment about her policy. I know she's like pro-abortion and all sorts of other liberal shit that people get pissed off about. But what I find the most interesting about her career is that she had the opportunity to retire at like the ripe age of eighty in the Obama administration and get a sure in, you know, a liberal replacement. But she was avaricious greedy conceded enough to think i'll wait until the first woman president to get elected and then i'll have the first woman president give me a female liberal replacement and that ended poorly for her because now now she is dead under the fourth year of uh the trump administration and the the, the cards are thrown very hard at the table because she's either going to be replaced and I mean, it's going to be messy. It's going to be really messy because I thought, okay, great. She's dead. They're just going to replace her with someone conservative. But now I'm starting to wonder um, if that's even the smart idea. Because I I can see um, Trump trying to replace her uh, as a as a war cry to voters just to vote against him. You know what I mean? As opposed to... Um, not galvanizing those people and, and trying to win without the, the nominee in contest. But I, I, I don't know. I'm really torn over that. I really, at the same time, I really think she should just be replaced like right now. And the funny thing is, and I'm sure many people listening already know this, but um, they changed the rules. The Senate changed the rules while the Democrats controlled it to make it so that with only a, Small minor uh, majority, so 51% of people, 51 senators uh, voting, they can uh, confirm a Supreme Court nomination. It used to be a, uh, a large majority, so like 67 out of 100 people had to vote to confirm. But they changed that very specifically for uh, a liberal appointee during Obama, and now it's a rule in effect for Trump. So they might force it through, and they probably will. I think that's what the goal is. It's been a week or so. She died like right after my stream, of course, last week. So it's been a while since this happened, and people are talking about it, wondering what to do. And I think they've already announced that their plan is to replace her immediately, despite the fact that supposedly her dying wish, her last words to her granddaughter at her deathbed was, don't let Trump replace me before the election, uh, which is a very weird thing to say. I, I don't know if I believe that story. On one hand, I do believe that she's conceded enough to, to say that as her last words on her deathbed. Um, but at the same other time, I am fully able to believe that she's been dead for like three years. And they just now had to announce it, or they just now announced it right for the um, election, hoping we can delay the proceedings long enough to have the election happen. And then people will, will come out and vote to make sure that she gets replaced by a liberal nominee. And, and this has been the plan the entire time. We're going to use Ruth Bader Ginsburg to get Biden in. And then Biden can die, too. And we'll have President Kamala Harris? I think Kamala Harris. Who the fuck is his VP nomination? I don't even know. I'm so disinterested in this election. I, I legit did not know who the VP pick is. I'm sure. It's, I think it is Kamala. Biden vice president. It is Kamala. And I even said that Kamala would probably be the best pick. Because she's moderate she's like more moderate than most than most democrats right now so i don't know it's not a terrible pick and she's brown he did say it would be a woman like one like a judge like, wasn't a judge a moderator during like a debate asked him during the democratic debate will you consider putting a a, a a poc woman as your vice president pick and they all just said yeah like i guess i never really thought about it but sure now that i'm on the spot i guess i have to and now Kamala Harris is our Democratic vice presidential pick by, I guess, by, like, guilt. <laughs> because someone asked Biden the question, and they had to say yes, and now she gets picked because she's the only viable uh, brown woman that wouldn't, like, immediately alienate all the moderates. 
She doesn't look around. She's Hawaiian. I mean, she's not, she's not like, I don't think, she, I think she's Hawaiian, right? She's from Hawaii. She was a Navy SEAL. That's a decent pick. Whatever. Anyways, I don't care. I'm just saying she's dead. Everyone's happy. I'm happy. I don't even know why I'm happy. I'm just glad that something happened. Someone in the government that's been there for 80 fucking years is dead. And we get to move on. Things have changed around us. The scenery is a little bit different. That's all that matters. Nothing else matters. Nothing will change. But as long as things look like they're changing, I'm more happy than I was yesterday. You know what I mean? Uh, that's my that's my statement on Ruth Bader Ginsburg being super fucking dead. Uh, today will be a lot of reading. I don't know. I think a lot of people don't like it when I read for most of the stream. But today will be a reading episode. Um, I wasn't going to stream at all. And then I thought, you know, I should really check and see if the initial complaint for the uh, Russell Greer lawsuit has been filed and published online. And it had. So I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm doing the stream today and I guess I'm going to read this. And uh, as a blessing, the actual filing of the Greer lawsuit is just fucking insane. It's everything I could have hoped for. Um, I'll get into that in a second. I'm going to talk about Section 230 first. But I did look through it. And it is... I, I read it from front to back. It's 30 pages with 30 specimens attached. And um, it is the kind of thing you would really want to talk about. The, you know, as far as I could hope for, for something like this, because the Melinda Scott lawsuits have been getting kind of shitty. Like she'll file fucking, you know, 20 pages of nonsense and there'll be a couple funny paragraphs in it. Um, but it's mostly like pretend legalese where Melinda tries to pass off that she knows what the fuck she's doing when she doesn't. Uh, Russell Greer doesn't even pretend like there's not an attempt to make it look like this is a lawsuit and not just a, a desperate cry for help from the courts to fix his life with an absurd financial stipulation attached to it. Before I get into that, um, I guess I should talk just a second. Uh, did you bro and his girlfriend have had a run in of which I am being blamed for. And I, I don't want to talk about this cause I always, I get like this gross sensation when I talk about them, like, Oh, they really want me to talk about them. But, for the sake of posterity, and I'm only I'm only bringing this up because they filed a police report, and that adds some credibility to what they're saying. Because if they didn't file a police report, Digibro and his psycho girlfriend saying shit would mean less than nothing to me because they're desperate attention whores. But in this instance, they have oh jeez, they have filed a um a police report, which open if they're lying, they're criminally liable for it. Uh, for lying to the police. But Digibro announced this. And I'll throw this up on Firefox so you can see it. Uh, he's asking for information about this guy called Ronald Mejia. And he claims that his fan, this guy is one of his fans, and he broke into their house to try and kidnap his girlfriend. And I'm I'm just completely fucking up their pronouns or whatever the fuck they did a stupid thing where digi bro tried to became like a woman and then his girlfriend may became digi bro and now his name is digi knee and his name her name is digi bro and it's just all fucking stupid attention whore and psychotic bullshit and they cultivate a fan base of psychotic retards and they make them think that the that they're their friends so that they give them money for their videos their stupid fucking videos and then they break these these crazy people that they're making their living off of break into their fucking house and try to try to kidnap one of them. And it's like, yeah, of course, because you're you're fostering this mentally ill fan base of people who think they have this relationship with you and they don't. I want you to know that no matter who you think, you know, online, it doesn't matter if it's me or like Red Letter Media, the YMS guy, it does not matter what you think, you know, about them. You're wrong. Like, people are different online and off. I, I wear, I try to wear my heart on my sleeve. I try to talk really openly. I try to say what I'm actually thinking. But I know that I'm I'm different. I even, I sound different from how I talk on the forum. And I, I act different in real life uh, to both of those. There, there might as well all be different people. And I think everyone's like that. So if you're thinking that you know someone, you really don't. And in this case... Digibro and his girlfriend tried to make themselves look like something that would be comfortable with these fucking weirdos. And now they're breaking into their house. And that's not how it's interpreted, of course, because I make fun of them for saying this. Uh, because obviously this is not someone from the forum or whatever that they get mad at. 
I say people hurt by the forum, zero. People hurt by their own insane pedophile worshipping color personality, Digibro. Then Digi-Nee, Pantsu, comes out and says, you are scum, uh, to which I reply, I don't think I quote tweeted this because I didn't care at this point. Um, one second. What kind of audience do you foster, though? Your site doesn't hurt people. Why are you so afraid to make your own thread so people can dox your family? Which, really weird reply to that, to me saying that my actions have consequences and deliberately fostering an audience of these kinds of people is fucking insane. These lolicon anime avatars who support them. And they ask, why don't you let people dox your family on your site? And it's like, you don't need my permission to do that. People do it all the fucking time. So, <laughs> um, just go for it. I, I literally hadn't, people have been doing this for as long as I've run the forum. So fucking go for it. And then she, she, I swear, based on these replies, she's trying to get me to implicate myself somehow in this. You wouldn't remove it from your site though. I don't care my docs is up even if it led to a crime against me. You're celebrating a felony acted against me and encouraging people to continue fucking with me. I'm gear I bet you fucking money she's trying to entrap me with these messages. Because otherwise, either like she's like an insane person, which is true, but and she's trying to like carry this conversation on for no reason in public. Though then again, Digibro, the way he's handling this and, and publicly asking for information and saying all this shit while there's an supposedly an ongoing criminal investigation into this guy that broke into their fucking house. And he's just out and open asking for information, letting people know that he filed this, this criminal complaint that the police are looking for him. All the kinds of things you do not want a perpetrator who knows you from social media to see on your social media. Um... They say, I'm allowed to laugh at you. You're a pedophile living with a pedophile who invites crazy people into your home. You have cultivated parasocial, parasocial relations with dangerous people for profit. And now you're seeing the natural consequence of your own actions. I've done nothing. Uh, and someone replied to that were crying face because they broke up. I don't know if that's true. That's something I could imagine them faking for attention. But um, I don't know. They changed their Twitter handles, which I guess is as good as confirming it in uh, the world of 2020. But, uh, apparently, apparently he's been inviting all sorts of fucking weirdos. And I don't think this guy was someone that they've had in their house prior, but he, I mean, obviously he's, he's like letting people that she's not comfortable with inside the home. And that's leading to situations like this where she's in physical danger as a result. So they've split. So I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's even real. I wouldn't put it past them to fake it and lie on fucking police reports and shit. Um, but it's as they say, you get what you fucking deserve, and I think they're reaping the natural, as I said, the, the natural repercussions of the kind of, of personality they put out. And I don't, I'm sorry if that makes me despicable or whatever, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Don't invite crazy people into your fucking home. Step one of being an internet person, right? Because people out there are dangerous. They're fucking weirdos. And do the bare minimum to protect your own privacy. I think that's uh, good advice for everyone. Oh, okay. I have a I have a clip. I, don't ask me why I was watching Jersey Shore. I was, um, but I I I clipped this and I felt like I needed like a um, a segue for this. So here is a picture of Blair White, who is considered by many to be one of the most attractive looking trannies, and I don't know. How the fuck you can look like Blair posts all these very super doctored images on social media. And when they do live streams, you know, they have the camera post set up just perfectly. They got the fucking contrast knocked up. They got the exposure up so that you can't see imperfections. But when you get like a natural photo of them taken by someone else, Blair like Blair looks like a fucking quarterbacker with like the LA face stapled on. I don't know how to describe it, but every fucking person in LA, every woman in LA has the exact same face by the exact same professional plastic surgeons and it just looks like someone took a mold of the LA face pressed it onto Blair's face and melted their facial features into this form fit that everyone fucking has um, it's just the <laughs> it's the only reason I mean, it's the only fucking and that kind of, okay, this picture is weird because 
To the left looks like Milo Yiannopoulos, and to the right looks like Ben Shapiro. And I know those are not the, those people, but they just look like the part. This is a very bizarre world. It, it gives me creeps. But uh, here's my clip. Give me a second. Where did I put my clip? I had all the time in the world to get this set up, and I fucking did Oh, I put it on my desktop, of course I did. I'm dancing, I'm having fun, and I see this blonde-headed girl. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, wow, you know what? This one's a winner. Situation spending a lot of time with this girl that she got like all the clues that lead me to believe she's a man. She was wearing something to hide that Adam's apple. She had something on her hand. So we think situations might have got himself into a situation with the tranny out here. The new phrase in Miami is if you gotta think about it. If you have to think about it. If you have to think about it. We even have to hesitate to think. It is. It is. It's usually a dude. It's a tranny. Stay away. I don't know what I was... I must have... Uh, I don't even know. Who knows, dog? I don't even know what the f I was thinking. That's the first time. First time that that had happened. But I'm a trooper, man. I'm a situation, man. I think this show, this is like season two. I think this came out in like 2012, maybe 2014. Is it not fucking staggering to think... This show came out like in the last decade, and you just got Polly D saying tranny. And it's it's incredible to think about how stifled speech has become just in like the last eight fucking years. It, it physic it it literally makes me hurt, like on a deep physiological level. It pains me to see like that we could air that on fucking MTV a couple years ago, and now you'd get banned off literally everything for talking like that about someone. On online, it's just it it really angers me. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm coping real fucking hard here. I, I I wish for the simpler times to return, chat. I really do, cause I'm in fucking agony. Oh wow. Well. Um, okay. Let me pull up Adobe. Here here begins our our reading time. I hope everyone's gathered around in a nice circle. We've all pulled out some snacks. Um, I've donned, I, I know I don't do like a webcam, but I've donned my drag queen attire and it is now drag queen story time for all the little kids watching this. Uh, we're going to be reading two things. The first one is, it sounds incredibly boring when I say it like this. The FBI suggested pro or proposed changes to section 230 of the Communications Decency Act of 1996 to eliminate the facilitation of federal crimes. Um, this changes section 230, which if you don't know, if for some reason you're listening to this for the first time, God help you. Um, section 230 is a part of a, uh, bill, an act that was passed that protects service providers, be it internet service providers or a forum host, for instance, if a guy who owns Facebook, doesn't matter if you own like a 50 person website talking about, you know, llamas, or if you own fucking Facebook, you all get to enjoy these protections by Section 230, which protects you from civil liability resulting from the actions of a person using your service. So if you do something that causes damage, you're still liable for it. But if someone uses Facebook to say something defamatory, Mark Zuckerberg doesn't find himself in civil court. It does not and has never protected you from criminal liability arising from your site. So if your site somehow facilitates the, the breaking of a law, that you're held liable for it, even though Section 230 exists. Section 230 is only civil. So that means said, and I'm only going to read one part, because uh, I've read, and I really don't understand what they're hoping to accomplish, and I'll explain why. So they want to add a new subsection that changes the rules for... Um, Section 230 protection. These are called carve-outs. They want to carve out things that are currently protected by Section 230 by adding um, explicit language for things that are not protected by it now. So these are things that the government, the FBI, hopes that will be amended to the act. Um, this is the government agency proposing to Congress to make these changes so that they can do their job more, basically. Uh, 
which is never a good thing when you're talking about the FBI because they're all fucking crooks. So, new section D would remove immunity from liability that providers currently enjoy. Um, for the purposes of prosecutions and civil actions, so both criminal and civil, not already removed by the existing law, uh, to be uh, from an interactive computer service that acted purposefully with the conscious object to promote, solicit, or facilitate material or activity by another information content provider that the service knew or had reason to believe would violate federal criminal law. And a lot of this says, I'm not going to read all of this word for word, but a lot of this says the same thing. And I, what confuses me is I don't understand how that's different from the existing law. If you break the law or your site breaks a law, you're still criminally liable for it. Um, but I got an email. As soon as this came out, someone emailed me saying that uh, Orange Man Good, they're coming after your site. Enjoy it while it lasts. And they're saying that specifically because in the, uh, in the FBI press release, they said that they were specifically going after cyberstalking. Uh, alongside terrorism and stuff. So I don't know, and I would need someone who has a better understanding of the language of the law to read it, because I don't know if they're trying to make it illegal to republish, like, violent videos, you know, like a Christchurch thing. It, it, I don't know if they're going after that, if they're trying to do things that are, are specifically targeting, like, 8chan, if, um, you know what I mean, trying to make poll illegal from, from 8chan if they promote terrorism or something. Uh... But the the big one is this, and I really don't I don't know legalese enough. And I'm gonna have, I'm gonna talk to Nick. I, I promise you, uh, I'm gonna talk to Rakita at some point and go over the Greer lawsuit and this in particular because I want to know what he thinks and what other people think uh, regarding this new subsection would remove immunity from a computer service for purposes of prosecution or civil action related to a specific instance of material or activity that, if knowingly disseminated or engaged in would violate federal criminal law if the provider had actual notice of the material or activity's presence on the service and its unlawfulness, yet failed to remove or restrict access to the material, report to law enforcement where required, or preserve related evidence. So I don't know if this is specifically dealing with law enforcement agencies like the FBI or people in general. If I get an email from someone like Melinda Scott saying that this person is using your site who's stalking me, delete my thread or this content or ban him from your site and then i don't do that and he gets found guilty of cyber stalking which in the case of melinda scott and um uh and i can't remember his fucking name andrew carlson andrew carlson was found guilty of cyber stalking after she complained but she was also like a nut job so i'm wondering is this only like like the government saying, look this guy is using your site to stalk her can you delete this thread i'd have to oblige or something or if it's saying, if I get noticed from anyone saying that this might be against the law, then um, I'm held liable for it if if they're actually right. Which would basically create a DMCA-style notice for everyone hosting out of the U.S. for all potential litigation. As it says here in the on the paragraph below... Uh, actually, that one's about court orders, which I don't have a problem with. But this one says, um, would require interactive providers to offer easily accessible and apparent mechanisms for users to notify providers of unlawful content as described and would bar immunity if an interactive computer service is not able to receive actual notice of federal criminal material and comply with the requirements of the above paragraph. So are they saying that Every website on the planet that wants to enjoy Section 230 immunities has to have a DMCA form for all potential potential criminal activity. So if you want to host a website in the U.S. and you don't want to be liable for shit that other people fucking do on your website, you have to make it so that anyone complaining about anything has to be taken seriously exactly like, like a DMCA. That's how it reads to me. And that would be, uh, like I said before, if they repealed Section 230 outright, I would just close the forum, like, the same fucking day. And this is as bad as that. Like, I'm not going to host the site when the my government is so obviously trying to, shift the gov trying to shift the internet into a specific situation where you need a legal team on standby 
to process every arbitrary complaint like this. Like, I can't afford that, and I don't want to afford that. Like, I, I don't even want to bother if it's that hard, um, which, I'm, which I think is their intent. Now, I could be wrong. It could be something like you need, like, a contact form for, like, the government to send you legal notices, maybe something like that. But I, I really... I really don't know. Um, as it stands, it could go either way. I think, like as I say, if this is just a, a contract between you and the government, which would make sense if it was the FBI filing this, then how is this really that different from uh, from the existing law? Besides the ability, the, the, necess the necessity of a contact form from the government to be able to contact you reliably, uh, essentially eliminating a you know any kind of obscurity. You can't hide, you can't make servicing your service difficult for the government. That's how it reads. But if it is anybody complaining about anything, it's going to rape the internet. It's not even going to be worth it to try at that point. Everything will just be completely shattered. It's too much for one person to deal with, if anything. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy with any attempt to fuck with it. It's good as it is. Um, and, of course, there... I didn't read through all of this, but there's other parts where they tried to like build this as something that would make it um, fairer, help with Twitter and shit, which is going to help with uh, getting this through the fucking normies, the people who hate Reddit and Twitter, all the boomers who follow QAnon. And they're going to think, this is great, this is great, Orange Man, good, because the FBI wants to prosecute child pornographers, because everything is about child pornography, and I guess now uh, beating up on Mark Zuckerberg. As long as they can build it as anti-child pornography and beating up on Mark Zuckerberg and Jack and whatever, then it'll get passed, potentially. The other interesting thing is that um, Section 230 also, and this is the big one, Section 230 provides, well, this is one, the big one that I, I'm for changing a little bit because the way that it works right now is that if, face, if you use your company, if your company uses Facebook to advertise, right, and all of your income comes from advertisements on Google and Facebook. And then Google and Facebook decide, oh, your, your company sells gun accessories. We're not going to do business with you. You can't advertise with us anymore. And then you lose all of your business overnight. Section 230 also immunize, immunizes them from the consequences of banning you. Because um, they can say it was in good faith they terminated uh, – relations with you and your business being collapsed as a result doesn't matter to them per the law so this is them trying to change good faith to be basically anything that the provider says to something more strict that says um to restrict access to particular content in good faith the provider must meet certain criteria first it must be publicly available must have publicly available terms of service that would or use that state plainly and with particularity the criteria the service will employ and its content moderation practices. So basically they're saying that the uh, Twitter has to make clear and explicit rules and it can't do whatever the fuck it wants, which sounds good. Second, any restriction on access must be consistent with those terms of use with any official representations or disclosures regarding the service provider's content moderation policies. Third, a provider must not base its decisions or pretextual or deceptive grounds on pretextual or deceptive grounds or treat content inconsistently with similarly situated material it intentionally declines to restrict. So basically it says if you want to be immunized, you also have to treat everyone fairly, which is also a good thing. And fourth, the provider must supply the provider uh, of the content with notice explaining the basis for the restriction on access and a meaningful opportunity to respond unless such notice would interfere with law enforcement, would risk notifying a terrorist or criminal, or would risk imminent harm to others. So if you get banned from Twitter, Twitter has to actually say what you did wrong. They can't just be ambiguous about it. It would also mean that I would have to clearly explain to people what they did to get banned. But the way that it's written, it just makes me feel like, don't piss me off. It'd be like a rule in my terms of service. And I could just say, yeah, you pissed me off. So I banned you. And it would be perfectly kosher with this bill. So I don't know what the actual practical outcome of this passing would be. Um, but that's their intent. I don't. I mean, I, you can either interpret this optimistically or pessimistically. I choose pessimistically. Fuck the FBI. Um, fuck all this shit. This is all a power grab, and you shouldn't be fooled by it. Give me, give me your thoughts in chat as I take a sip of water. This is terrible? Probably. 
Fuck Zuck and Jack based. Boring. Okay. Let's get to anime pussy. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> if you have an anime avatar, I think I, I think I hate anime avatars now. I think I, I've just gone over that hump where it's just like live and let live and fuck people who watch anime. I think that people who watch anime are like on on par with like the Marvel soy boy consumers. Like it's the exact same thing. Except instead of like trannies and um, lesbian women, the the anime consumer fawns over traps and uh, women who talk with the voice of a child and squeak like a like a rubber dog toy in porn. Like that's that's the the mirror mirror image of the Marvel consumer is the anime guy. Fuck you. There's a couple. Of, I can't remember the last anime I watched. I guess I watched Lane. Which sucked. I would never suggest it. It was awful. Uh, music was okay, though. Anyway. Anyways. Anyways. Um, one other thing. Low Tech, apparently... I think... Did I talk about... Probably not. Low Tech squandered all his savings. Um, I might have mentioned this last stream. But Low Tech is going through custody right now. And he explained to the court that... He couldn't pay the uh, court-appointed representative representative for the child's interest in the custody battle. So uh, he says that of the money that he had saved, and I think he had like seventy thousand in savings. He spent almost all of it. He spent money on a luxury car. He spent like fifteen thousand dollars on mobile gotcha games and shit. And he he's pleading poverty in the court of law, saying that he can't afford his guardian ad litten fees because he squandered basically all of their wealth in the months since the divorce started. So, <laughs> I, I don't know. It sucks to be that fucking kid. That's all I know. Uh, the court did... Actually, the court agreed to give protective orders to i think everyone like everyone and everyone that has ever uh associated with low tax now has like a restraining order against them because she the the judge is splitting the guardian ad litton fees two-thirds low tax one-third the wife and he approved of protective orders against low tax for i think both of his kids, including the one from the other marriage, and both of his ex-wives now. So really, really having a good time in court, low taxes. Okay, let's get into the lawsuit. And uh, that'll be the end of the stream uh, when I finish reading this lawsuit. So if you're not interested, uh, that's all. <laughs> because <laughs> the rest of this is the sweet meat. I would actually, even if you don't like me reading, I would ask you to give this a chance because this is pure fucking insanity um this document this is 30 pages long i've gone through with a highlighter this is how i spent my day i bleed and i sweat for you for my 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 chat uh th this is greer v moon the publisher of the website kiwi farms and kiwi farms a website defendants in the United States District Court of Utah. And that is worth mentioning. I do not know if he can actually sue me in Utah. Uh, so just going down through my highlights. Uh, this is for the nature of action. He says in paragraph four, while typically upheld by the courts, the Communications Decency Act is an outdated law and wasn't intended to protect sites such as defendants. Thus, the law should be found that it doesn't give immunity to a defendant in this case for the non-copyright claims and i'll explain what those are later but just right out the bat um his argument is this law which immunizes the defendant shouldn't apply here because i fucking say so not a not a great legal argument like immediately not a good legal argument because he's pointing to uh, of course if i reply to this actually before i get into this i'm gonna make a tweet so open up my twitter is Job for underscore two. I'm making a tweet right now. How should I react to the Greer lawsuit? And I'm gonna make it a poll. Okay. Actually, how do I make a poll with this? I'm using um tweet deck. Fuck it. I'll just do it normally. Do it live. 
This is great content for a podcast. How should I react to the Greer lawsuit? Choice one, ignore it. Choice two, respond pro pro se. Try and choice three, ask Scordis for pro bono help. Okay. Okay, I'm tweeting this right now. Uh to explain the options. I've I've won all the Melinda things by doing nothing and just having the court throw it out. I could respond pro se, which would be probably a very stupid move that might open me up to losing because I'm an idiot and I don't know what I'm doing, right? Um, and I also can't legally represent my own site because I'm not a lawyer in Utah. And then at, uh, option three, Scordis was, I believe, the either the attorney for Taylor Swift or Ariana Grande when... Uh, Greer sued them and after Greer lost he chose to harass the daughter of Scordis on Facebook and since then Scordis has like reached out and represented everyone he represented um the woman who criminal filed a criminal complaint and is currently in the process of winning her criminal complaint against Greer for cyber stalking and he's representing her so this guy has like dedicated his his professional life to hunting Russell Greer like a fucking rabid dog. So I'm curious if I... Sh and I emailed him when he first threatened me. He said, would you represent me pro bono against Greer? And he replied, and then I gave like five paragraphs explaining my situation and intimate detail. And his reply was, um, it would be my pleasure sent for my iPhone. So I'm think I'm leaning towards Scordis. I think that would be the funniest, the funniest option. Um, see a lot of people... Uh, I'll, 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 I'll show you the results in a bit after I'm done reading it some more. Uh, okay. Back to the meat. Back to the sweet meat. Okay, so classifying Moon's site as a forum is being extremely kind. His users don't debate and discuss like a traditional forum does. His site goes far beyond that. They stalk and harass. Moon and his site have caused three people to commit suicide. Um... And then he quotes the uh, Chloe Segal article when Chloe Segal set themselves on fire to protest homelessness and mental health care in the United States, which has been uh, taken by complete fucking assholes, utterly, utterly shameless people and turned into a, a banner against my little dinky fucking forum. Um, paragraph 15, Defender Ki Defendant Kiwi Farms is a site Defendant Moon runs. In his very own words, Moon has described the site as having nothing to do with New Zealand, the land of Kiwis, saying our name is a pointed jab at some of the mush mouth autistic people we make fun of. Um, now we're on to general allegations. I, I, I'm skimming through a lot of this. Again, I'll be talking in detail, probably going through the entire thing with Nick in some fucking 26 hour long live stream. Um, the general allegations, the users on Kiwi Farms began to put Greer on other troll sites like Encyclopedia Dramatica, which is a libelous and bizarre form of Wikipedia and twisted Reddit threads. This is a pattern that Kiwi Farms does to all of its victims, which is well documented. So immediately he's trying to say that the site has caused him damage, right? So what does he do? He says a lot of the damage is on other sites. Not a strong legal argument. And he describes the forum like... Um, the Amityville Horror House, you know, uh, just like it's a living, breathing thing into itself that has um, motivations and intentions and uh, commits actions, which is not the case. It's just a fucking Zenforo site. Paragraph 21, fake profiles began to pop up on social media of Greer using his pictures with derogatory names such as Oh, and this is a legal document that's in fucking court. I downloaded it off Pacer. It cost me ten dollars, with like one dollar, like ten cents per page. So this is real. Um, this is fake profiles using pictures with derogatory names such as <clears throat> Mobius shit lips and rat face. On Kiwi Farms, there are users who use Greer's pictures for their user profiles, with some of the usernames being Ugly Troll for You, Zombie Face, and Rust Hard. Which, and this is a direct quote from the fucking paper, is a combination of plaintiff's name and the word retard. Other profiles have included defamatory names such as Rapey Russ and have included photos of plaintiffs with his hair photoshopped off, oddly making him look bald 
when in fact, plaintiff has a full set of hair. Having his hair photoshopped isn't defamatory or particularly concerning to Greer, but it must be pointed out to show the bizarreness of Moon's users, uh, which sounds oddly sexual. I don't want to refer to um, my forum, my forum fan zone or whatever the fuck as my users. It makes me sound like I'm a drug. Like there's a kind of crystal meth called Moon that people are injecting into themselves. Uh, it mentions Exhibit C. I think this is Exhibit C. So this, okay. Again, he filed all this shit. There's like 40 fucking exhibits for this 30 long page document. This is a picture of him. And he says that his hair has been photoshopped to make him look bald. But I think that's just like a picture of him. Um, he's really insecure about his balding. I've been told it doesn't look photoshopped to me. It just looks like an unflattering picture. But for some reason that was so offensive to him. He had to list it in his complaint, even though, um, as he says, it's not defamatory or concerning. So it's just him bitching in the fucking court of law. Paragraph 29, Kiwi Farms has doxed Greer's addresses and contact information and displayed it on that site for people to disparage him. The users on that site have openly called for harassment against Greer. Other users have asked for people to put everything about Greer onto that site so that they can trash it, copyright or not. Exhibit F. Um, so this is, oh, is this Exhibit F? No, oh, this is Exhibit G. I don't have that exhibit. Um, that's just him bitching about the form, I guess. Flick, flick, flick. Okay, now this is... The copyright infringement. So this is the book. He's written several things, and he's made several songs. This is the book for uh, his claim of copyright. So Greer knows that reviews are from Kiwi Farms because the comments have included links to Kiwi Farms and other obscure sites. That's important. Remember this. The Kiwi Farms is an obscure, obscure site. Inviting people to go read the book illegally. Exhibit L. Uh... And the, the following link shows where the book is at the Kiwi Farms with the heading entitled Rusty's Tale. The book's location has since been moved to a different page and is also accessible on the front page about Greer, Exhibit M. Below the title, Rusty's Tale is a Google link drive to Greer's book. Somebody created a copy of Greer's book and put it in a Google Drive file that is accessible in the Kiwi Farms. This is the most like ridiculous thing about him, is that when he sent his DMCA to me, I said, bro... The fucking thing that you're complaining about is on Google. Send your DMCA to Google. And what's funny is that he would probably fucking do that. Like, uh, the Google would take that off if he actually filed a complete DMCA, like I told him to do to Google Drive, but he has not done that. Legally, I cannot be held liable for something that is a linked to from my site. And there is case law to prove exactly that, because people tried to sue Google for linking to shit, and that didn't work. Uh, next paragraph, infuriated and hurt, Greer sent Mr. Moon request to have his book removed, but Moon refused. The notices weren't in the form of a DMCA takedown notice, rather they were emails wishing to avoid litigation. Litigation hadn't really crossed Greer's mind, based mostly on Moon's website FAQ, which states that Mo Moon is, quote, insane person with, quote, no ac assets. And so it made no sense to try suing him, and so only email requests were made, not legal threats, like a DMCA notice. So in this, he says that I'm an insane person with no assets, which is true. And then he says that he didn't send a DMCA notice, which is not great when you're trying to claim that I violate, knowingly violate your copyright. You're, you're saying that you didn't do the process required to make this complaint. And then in turn, Moon published plaintiff's request on Kiwi Farms and explained that there was so much wrong with Greer's request for it to even be considered. That is harassment and contributing to harassment, which is just bullshit. Um, this paragraph is funny. So he wanted to get the site to stop harassing him, I guess, such as getting the police involved because of the site harassment. But the Salt Lake City police wouldn't pursue a case because they wouldn't allow Greer to file a complaint over email. Although Officer Hernandez and Officer Greer spoke with said to ask Moon once more to remove his stuff. The police only allowed phone complaints, which Greer was not comfortable doing because of his disability, and so never filed a complaint. If you don't know, Russell Greer has, like, a facial paralysis thing, so he can't move his lips, and I think even his eye, like, his, um, his eyelids are droopy because his muscles are all fucked up. So I, that's kind of sad to me, but 
at the same time, he's such an asshole that it's, it immediately washes away any kind of sympathy. Uh, paragraph 46, other users on Kiwi Farms have created unauthorized audio recordings of Greer's book and have put them on various sites. One infringer used the hashtag SpazFace as a direct discriminatory insult against Greer. Kiwi Farms has also linked to these audio recordings exhibit O. That paragraph is great because you're basically showing how the book is being used fairly on the site. It's, it's, um, that's something to raise in defense of the forum. Uh, the copyright infringement hasn't been your run of the mill infringement. They have put a copy of the book on the site for everyone to save onto their devices via the Google Drive link, so not on the fucking forum, uh, and have thus purposefully deprived Greer of making money and have deprived him of the ability to try and clear his name with a book that was written for the express purpose of doing just that. This has been demonstrated with marketers refusing to market the book because it has bad reviews, not understanding that the Kiwi Farms is behind the reviews. I think I have a specimen for that. Uh, maybe not. Oh, here it is. So just to show how great he is at protecting his own privacy, uh, he took the highlight tool of, I guess, like, I guess Adobe, which doesn't actually blot things out. And I can easily see the name Hazel Jr. Zero. Um, so he's linking to this person and says, that's a lot of reviews. And he says, by people who hate me, anyone can post a review. That's why I was waiting to use your service. Uh, we talked a few days ago. I remember, yeah, let's get this shindig on the road. I can't control spam trolls spamming my stuff. They do anything. They do this to anything I do, even if it's really good. That's what my book is about. I got myself into an odd situation with the celebrity. And when I came out about it, people started stalking me and making my life hell. It's a very true story. And I just want people to know what it's about. And that's why I want to use your services. So this was him indicating uh, that this person refuses to do business with him because his book looks like shit. Uh, I have other specimens. This is a picture of... Oh, this was him talking about doxing and shit. And people sent him a bag of dirt that says you're a dirt bag. But you can clearly see the post... Like, the address is on the label back there. Like, he, he doesn't blot the shit out. I'm sure it got posted on fucking social media. He makes zero effort to, like, protect himself. And then bitches when people send him bags of dirt, which is, like, the least offensive thing possible. I mean, I guess it would be annoying, but... This is the specimen that says... The Google Drive and Mega Upload link, which is not copyright infringement that I have to care about, at least. Uh, okay, now here's the song. Now, you might be thinking, how does someone with facial paralysis sing a song? And the answer is, they don't. Let me, for the sake of criticism and ridicule, I have prepared for the audience... Um, a copy of Russell Greer's musical talents, and I'll give a spoiler right now. It's not him singing. Can't imagine being fifteen and waiting for Romeo on that white horse, making you believe it was a love story. I know heartbreak all too well I get you, I get you When I got down I turned up your sick beats So I wrote you a song To say thanks for helping me Get on my feet But good intentions hit the fan Guess you don't like your fans And it's making me sick Was a summer of 16 Finished my song for you Sorry if it's cheesy I'm making it wasn't easy But you put a blank space over my name I don't get you I don't get you When I got down I turned up your sick That's what I call a banger chat that's fucking music. Fucking. 
<laughs> Keep playing it, Josh. No, I'm out. Uh, yeah, not great. Uh, surprisingly, not terrible though. Um, he kind of seems like a, a one man boy band, and he's doing like an in sync thing. Uh, so I guess Greer paid him like a couple hundred dollars to sing this shitty song that I wrote because I got fucking a fucked up face and I can't sing it myself. It's about how I want to fuck Taylor Swift, you know, and he did it. And it's, I mean, it's repetitive. That sounds like one of those default tunes that come with certain, like, audio editors. You know what I mean? There was that, that black guy, that schizophrenic black guy who sang Rock and Roll McDonald's. He had this audio editing software that came with beats included, and he always just used those. So it's like stock music with, with uh, him singing over it. That's what that kind of reminds me of. But he paid for like an actual singer to to do a rendition of his of his lyrics. Um, okay, let us continue. Uh, okay. So seeing that his book had hit a snag because of the bad reviews, Greer decided to write a song because he. This paragraph is fucking nonsense, by the way. I can't interpret it. Like the the actual syntax of his writing is just awful. Uh, Greer decided to write a song because he felt he could bring awareness better with a song. He wanted to bring awareness to celebrity misrepresentation and cyberbullying. Celebrity misrepresentation, by the way, tying back into what I said about parasocial relationships, these people are not who you fucking think they are, and Tyler, Taylor Swift does not want to fuck some gimpy face retard because he likes her music. You know what I mean? Like, if, if you don't know someone in real life, you really don't know them. I'm sure you're all great, wonderful people and shit, but really, I, like, I don't know you. <laughs> I really don't. Um, of course, that is his opinion he has gathered after doing research and talking with people. I don't know what that fucking sentence means. I've read that sentence like eight fucking times. Of course, that is his opinion he has gathered after doing research and talking to people. Why is this in a court document? What the fuck does this mean? Why is there a comma there? Why? <laughs> How do, whatever. This is in a court document, by the way. Creer paid CD Baby, a music distributor that publishes and distributes the music of independent artists, to publish his song and to place it onto major music platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. So he paid a distributor to distribute his music onto platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. Next paragraph. CD Baby also has an online store where they sell the artist's music in the form of an MP3 download. Greer was not happy with his song being on the store because he knew a troll would buy it and place it onto the website, and that's just what happened. Sorry, dot, 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 and that's just what happened. Then... So, uh, okay, that paragraph doesn't make any fucking sense either because it's like, what is he actually upset about? All those streaming platforms distribute your fucking music. Is he, like, upset that it comes as, like, an MP3 file that you download that anyone can just re-upload anywhere? As opposed to, like, the five extra seconds it would take to figure out a way to download an MP3 off iTunes? Is that his complaint? That they that they did that on their own platform first, right? Um, I, I think that's what he's complaining about. On... Two paragraphs down, upon investigating, Greer was horrified to find that the MP3 of his song was indeed on the Kiwi Farms. The link can be found here. Now, this is the important bit, because the rest of his fucking lawsuit is just absolute bullshit. But in this instance, he did file a DMCA takedown complaint, and he made he po used this exact same link in his DMCA, Right. So if he did file a DMCA takedown complaint correctly and completely and sent it to me, and then I said, no, I'll take the burden of this on it myself, which I did, then I am liable if there is damages, right? But I don't think he actually did send a complete one. Um, even though I did look at it and said, ah, you know, whatever, fuck you, I'll, I believe this is fair use, right? Um, I'm looking at it now in retrospect, and I really think he fucked it up because this is the forum thread. This is the link that he sends it to, and it doesn't link to the post. And I don't think it's ever linked to the post because when I looked at it the first time, I'll show you the conversation. I'll read you the conversation, actually. Let me pull up my Firefox or Thunderbird or whatever the fuck. Um, I really should have had this pulled up beforehand. I apologize. Actually... Let me just search. 
So this is the actual notice that he sent me at the time. This is April 18th, 2019. He says, Mr. Moon, please find and attach DMCA takedown notice to immediately remove both of my copyrighted material from your site. My song, which is not even released on streaming services and my book, both are copyrighted with the USCO. You have until Friday the 19th to comply. That's bullshit. You don't get to set fucking timelines, eat shit. Then he says, the attachment was somehow not attached. Please find it attached. Okay, whatever. And then a third email in a row. I feel I wasn't clear in my last letter, so I edited it, which is my fault. Thanks, Russell. And I'll show you in Adobe what he actually changed real quick. Um. So this is the... F oh, I'm sorry. I don't have the other one, actually. The first one, he doesn't have a link to his own thread at all. This one actually does contain a link to his thread. It was something like Kiwi Farms threads Russell Greer without the actual numbers that you can find in the thread. Um, and again, he's just bitching about the fucking the Google Drive link. And then it contains the same link as found in the lawsuit, which is to this page, which does not have the content. So when I first saw this, I legit looked at this thread. I scrolled up and down like this. I didn't see any kind of attachment. And I thought, bro, you didn't fucking link me yet. Which is what I said. I can't action these because you do not link to offending posts. And he says, respectfully, I don't need to, which is wrong. Legally, if you're going to send a DMCA, um, you have to point to where it is. Because otherwise, I can't fucking delete it, right? So even if I wanted to comply with his DMCA, he doesn't actually accurately link to the post. And then he says, there are so many hate-filled slanderous threads about me that I do not know the exact location of where it is on your site. So you can't even fucking find it. This thing that you're claiming is damaging your financial and reputational health is, is somewhere lost in a thread of thousands of fucking pages that you can't even find yourself when you are issuing a legal complaint. Then he goes on to say, all I know is that two people have said the book is on the site and so is the song. Um, and I said, that is absolutely not how it works. And you can literally eat shit. You gimpy face retard, put this in your lawsuit, cuck. And after reading this 30 page lawsuit, I am sorry to say that put this in your lawsuit, cuck did not make it. I'm sure, I'm sure at some point in the editing process, that email was in there and he decided, no. No, I'm not going to give Joshua, quote, null, end quote, moon, the satisfaction. I'm cutting this out. Uh, motherfucker, I just wanted one thing, okay? You're going to sue me? Fine. Go ahead and sue me. But you better put that fucking email in because nothing makes me laugh harder than my own jokes, okay? So fuck you, Russell. Now it's now it's personal. Um... <laughs> uh, Greer's frequent harasser, this is paragraph 55, by the way, Rustard remarked, holy shit, it is. Upload it here so no one accidentally gives Russell money. Exhibit R. This comment cements Greer's claims of the trolls seeking to ruin his life. Not only have they willfully infringed on Greer, Greer's copyright, they have openly conspired to steal Greer's work and deprive Greer of money. This is harassment. Ah, 57. I wonder how he drinks water. Like, I just took a sip of water, and I just realized I really need my lips to do that properly. I bet he dribbles like fucking crazy. Um, 57. The infringement of his song was harmful because his song wasn't even on streaming services yet and hadn't advertised the CD Baby store location. Thus, hundreds, if not thousands of plays on Greer's song was being had, and Greer wasn't being compensated for it. Now, again, he has never actually linked me the location of this song. But on the prior page, 1447, there is a song posted that says, Enjoy this repetitive turd. And yeah, this is the first part of his old song. So I don't know if this is actually the song and contention here. I have no idea. This just happens to be on the previous page. Um, but Zenforo has a mighty fine feature attached that counts the number of times a attachment has been downloaded. And I can see very specifically that there have been 369 views on this file since April 15th, 2019. Literally less than one view a day since it was published. 
Um, I don't know what kind of financial compensation. I'm pretty sure I could fucking write a check for that much. What is it, like a dollar a pop? Here's here's $369, Russell Greer. This is your actual damages. Eat shit. Though, again, I don't know if this is the song he's talking about, and I'm pretty sure that this song is used for the just saying. Uh, uh, page 61. Now, this is about his DMCA. The DMCA was signed into law in 1998 to shield websites from liability arising from copyright infringement claims, with the caveat being that websites follow an honor takedown request. Uh, since the defendant manages the website, he is expected to honor all properly formed DMCA requests. That's correct, unless I want to take liability for it. On defendant's website, Mr. Moon has a section about removing copyrighted material. Moon's site then wrongfully states what copyright content we do host is usually covered under fair use, but if you're a copyright holder, email legal at kiwiforms.net with the proper documents. Um, Moon's copyright statement is wrong because all copyrights, famous or not, is protected by the Copyright Act or whatever, with the copyright holder determining how he or she will distribute his work. That's not true. Um, it is true that famous and non-famous works are protected the same. Technically protected than but the same under the law, but yeah, you don't have exclusive content control over your works. Greer had to send two versions of his DMCA notice because he was initially unable to locate all infringing content because defendants have over a thousand threads on them, which I think he means pages. But his final DMCA notice, which is uh, Exhibit C, the one I showed you, contained the exact links and locations of his content works. Satisfying all elements of the federal statute. Not fucking true. And in the email where I told him I can't find the shit you're complaining about, he even says that um, he, it's not his job. I like this, this sentence in particular. Mr. Moon then emailed Greer back and derided him for using a template for his DMCA request. Um... Paragraph 70, Mr. Moon then went on to explain that he knew who Greer was from his site and that Moon was waiving his safe harbor protections and would claim fair use and that he would not be removing Mr. Greer's copyrighted materials. Greer replied that Moon evidently doesn't know what fair use is and Moon replied, try me, which inferred that Moon was daring plaintiff to sue him. Uh, for the record, this is paragraph 76, for the record, normal productive people do not do what Moon's site does, which I guess is just... Uh, <laughs> his own his own opinion i will now read to you my email um to russell greer one second this is the second dmca takedown request this was not the one that i just read on the forum uh mr moon please find my updated dmca takedown notice in this letter you will find links that lead directly to the infringing materials i'm asking that you have the materials removed from your site by tomorrow also please do not publish my email onto your site um, but bullshit, that's the one I showed you that had the link that doesn't go to the right place. Um, I said, your first link is a post containing a reference to a Google Drive, and why you're, why are you complaining to me about this and not Google? And your second link is to a song, which is unarguably your copyright and will not be removing it, because I believe in good faith it is in fair use. In this specific instance, I will waive whatever safe harbor protections I have and personally burden liability for posting it. You, Russell Greer, are a public figure who has filed lawsuits against multiple public figures multiple times, you are a published author, songwriter, singer, motivational speaker, and dancer who has voluntarily posted his multimedia works for half a dozen social media websites with the intention of receiving publicity from it. The participants in the thread about you on my site are critics of your work, and you have a propensity to delete works from public viewing at random and without warning. In order to actualize criticism of you, what you produce, and what you do in a way that would satisfy a critical audience in the future, I find it necessary to preserve the song in its entirety. This does not infringe upon your market. The critical audience of your work is distinct from the consumer audience of your work. The people who would patronize you or your music are not going to be users of the Kiwi Farms thread about you. Discovery of this hosted file on the website is incidental to being critical of you, not incidental to supporting you. So that was my email to him. He did not include this in his lawsuit for whatever reason, but he did reply um, at the time saying, I don't think you know what fair use is, but okay, thanks, Josh. Uh, he then says, oh, uh, I said, try me in reply to that. And he says, thanks for showing me what yeah, you have the temperament of a six-year-old and I'm the low cal, LOL. Well, anyways, I talked to a lawyer. He says I have a case against you, see you in court. Oh, and he's Jewish, so don't bite his fingers off. I know you have a weird fetish for that. <laughs> and I reply, of course a lawyer is going to tell you you have a case. How do you think he makes his money by not taking jobs? Back to the lawsuit. That was from uh, April 2019, by the way. Uh, oops, we put up the papers on the, the screen. Here we go. 
allegedly, admittedly, Greer is fi frightened with filing this complaint. Oh no, the, the, the vicious dog is baring its fangs. As he fears Moon will retaliate against him, but he hopes a judgment against Mr. Moon and his site will get Mr. Moon and his site to stop bothering Greer, or even better yet, have Moon close down his site altogether. Greer is also petitioning this court for a preliminary injunction as he fears Moon's site will retaliate against him and his family for filing this complaint. Complete bullshit, and I think that the fact that he's saying that he just wants to like hurt me in my forum is a point against him. You shouldn't be saying that you are doing anything other than protecting your copyright when you're filing a copyright claim. But then again, this is not a copyright claim. This is, I'll read the full title. Complaint for declaratory and injunctive relief for contributory copyright infringement electronic communication defamation. So there's more to it. it the, um... Acts get shorter as they lead up. I guess they get tired of writing them, so he kind of becomes more concise as things go on. Uh, he talks about how it's not fair use, and in particular, I highlight that the statute says the effect upon the potential market for the copyright work is probably my strongest argument for this. I've mentioned Akila Hughes versus Benjamin uh, or Carl Benjamin, who is Sargon of Akkad, and how the judge very specifically said that the fact that the copyrighted work was transplanted onto Sargon's channel was transformative in its own way. I do strongly believe that the fact that the song is on the forum, allegedly, I can't find it, uh, <laughs> is transformative in its own way, because of, of the 369 people who have at this time downloaded that song, or at least initiated a download of that song, I guarantee you zero of them are people who would have bought that song. So that is, and it's nest again, it's like I said, it's necessary for the sake of archiving his dumbass actions, his, his dumb, stupid fucking life and every stupid fucking thing he does is necessary to archive it. Though I don't think archiving has ever been like a legal argument before. I, I've read through a lot. I've read through, I think I've read through every landmark copyright dispute. Um, on, that I could find, and I don't remember any of them talking about archives. So if I if I did try to argue the importance of archiving stuff for posterity, that would be potentially you know um, a, a landmark new defense for for copyright, which would be great. I would love to see something like that in copyright law, but alas, we're not going to get that. Um, 86, pertaining to the purpose and the character of use, although Mr. Moon may be allowing Greer's copyright works for criticism and commentary, and as far as Greer knows, non-profit use, Moon's users have openly stated that they seek to deny Greer money. This factor disfavor fair use. No, it fucking does not. 89, lastly, pertaining to the effect of the market, the first factor can be tied in. Moon's users have openly stated they seek to deprive plaintiff of money and have been distributing the songs to other sites. Moon's users have put the songs into a lyric site and have added negative commentary about the song and about Greer, thus dissuading anyone from listening to the song. Listening to the song dissuades people from listening to the song. I don't think people putting it on fucking genius.com or whatever counts. And then this is him basically bitching about the Communications Decency Act. For like the rest of the lawsuit, or for the, the the rest of this complaint, we're about halfway through, and as I said, it does get faster as I get towards the end. So, sites of questionable characteristic of questionable character have already lost their Section Two Thirty immunity, namely sites that host prostitution. This is coming from a guy who has spent his entire adult life lobbying to the best of his ability to legalize prostitution and he's very specifically i'll mention that in a second but animal crush sites and sites that sell illegal drugs are also not protected under section 230 that's true but that's because those are criminal all these things are criminal and i left a little note to myself saying that criminal activity is very specifically uh not protected by section 230 and prostitution required an amendment to section 230 before it would lose that protection there was a very specific uh act that was passed by congress which modified section 230 just so the doj could shut down back page so him saying that the existing law that stands doesn't protect me is um very very optimistic the court should find that Section 230 immunity does not extend to hate troll sites like Mr. Moon's for two reasons, legislative intent and the mere fact that Moon is actively involved with the site. Of this entire lawsuit, and I have read through all of it, not once does Russell Greer ever attempt to personally say, or say that I personally have harmed him in any way. 
He says that I participate in the site, therefore I'm not just a publisher, I'm also an editor or a participant or a user or whatever the fuck, which is true, but you have to show a post that I've made which has defamed him. Uh, he cannot find a single contribution that I have ever made to anything that would uh, that would make me a part of the people causing him injury, allegedly, right? Uh, continuing... Uh, paragraph 101, as explained in paragraph 67, Moon also partakes in the harassment by posting Grizz messages asking him to stop engaging in the commentary. That's not fucking harassment. You're harassing me at that point, asshole. I can post whatever the fuck I want if it arrives in my inbox. Fuck you. Moon patrols the forums, thus condoning the acts of his users. That's not true. So it seems to be a bit of a paradox that for Moon to urge civility while condoning the harassment, this, the disclaimers that Moon posts are decorative. They are put there seemingly to save himself from liability, but he doesn't enforce the roles. People still contact Greer. Moon allows Greer's social medias to be displayed, which causes people to harass Greer, and Moon allows for Greer's intellectual property to be posted, which Greer feels the effects of. And lastly, Greer has, opened his, has posted openly on his social media but he wants the harassment to stop, but the trolls screenshot his pleas and post it onto the Kiwi Farms, and Moon would be aware of that. This part's... I, I should have highlighted this, but I guess I when I first read this, I didn't pick up on this. And his cyber-stalking case that is ongoing, his actual criminal in Utah cyber-stalking case, um, a huge a huge reason why that's moving forward, and he's on the, fu uh, the, you know, the shit end of that stick is that the woman very clearly made it known to him that he did that she did not want him contacting her and she, he continued to contact her so he's tr literally trying to draw parallels from lessons he learned in his own ongoing litigation that because he made it known that he doesn't want people contacting him uh somehow I'm liable for it because that's that's a little trick up his sleeve that he learned from uh harassing women back in his time <laughs> Uh, Ron Paul had a stroke. Send me the link. I'll continue reading. Send me on, on the Twitter. Oh, someone already has. Okay, we'll take a break for me reading so I can drink water and we'll watch Ron Paul have a stroke. You do this from free market economists is it has to be liquidated. We have to get rid of that. That's a burden. We have many workers. We can't buy it. Oh no! Oh, Dr. Paul. Oh. You do this from free market economists. Is it oh, I like Ron Paul. <laughs> thanks for thanks for ruining my stream, you fuckers. That's really sad. Oh, we could have prevented this. Can you let's take a second to think about how much better everything would be if Ron Paul was president in 2004. We would have built the World Trade Centers exactly as they were, but a little bit higher. We wouldn't have gone into the Middle East. We would have pulled out, probably be on on the gold standard by now. We'd all be ANCAP. With with AR-15s and drum barrels, roaming around in our our unregulated ATVs, with no um, with no fuck oh catalytic converters, they'd just be pumping out pure fumes, completely un unhindered by by the strong arm of government. Probably would be saying the word tranny without being shot. There wouldn't be riots everywhere. It would be a much better world. And Ron Paul tried to warn us, but we didn't listen. With our child brides. And hey, that's you. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I hope he's okay. Because I really do like Ron Paul. I might, I'll play a clip at the end. I'm not going to play it now. I'll finish this and then I'll play a special Ron Paul clip. My first red pill. One of my first... First red pills that really made me think, wow, things are fucked up, and the people in power are the people who are really fucked up. Um, <clears throat> back to the wall ceiling.
Uh, as stated, okay, this is Moon's involvement. As stated above, defendant is actively involved in the harassment by providing his own commentary, by allowing hateful comments to be made, by allowing Greer's intellectual property to be illegally used, but providing a hope for harassment. Moon has helped facilitate and condone the harassment, and therefore he should be liable for the acts of his users, especially since it would be near impossible feat to track down his users. Well, no. Like, literally no. <laughs> I like this part. Moon is aware of his CDA immunity and wears it like a badge of courage, boasting about his indestructibility and claims not to know what goes on in his site when the clear evidence shows that he monitors and engages with it. I have never, ever boasted about my indestructibility. If there's anyone who's more aware, more acutely aware of his mortality, uh, I've never met him because I'm pretty sure I... I, I a very hard and not saying that you can't touch me because I'm very aware that people can touch me. I'm just saying. Uh, and 108, because of the two above mentioned reasons, Mr. Moon should lose his immunity for harassment and false light claims. Moon has been has already waived his immunity for intellectual property claims, even though the CDA doesn't protect copyright infringement. It absolutely does. And the fact is that the DMCA was created specifically because the Communications Decency Act was so strong that it protected copyright infringement as well. So they had to puncture it with the DMCA. 112. Lastly, the way the Kiwi Farms was built, it allows people... Okay, this is a great... This is funny. This is, like, actually funny. Lastly, the way Kiwi Farms was built, it allows for people to see a user's interactive history on the site. Greer has evidence of Mr. Moon's profile looking at the sections on Greer. Thus, Moon would have been aware of the infringement and contributed by interacting with the infringing content. So he lurks the site enough and clicks my avatar and sees that Noel is currently viewing the Russell Gear thread, and he's like, oh my god, I, I finally have it. The smoking gun that he's reading my thread. <laughs> uh... I don't know, I just found that funny. Plaintiff has sustained and will continue to sustain substantial injuries, loss, and damages to his exclusive rights and his copyrights as the result of the defendant's wrongful conduct and amount to be determined by no less than $150,000 per copyright infringed. Plaintiff only asked for the damages for why I sued Taylor Swift and I don't get you Taylor Swift because those works have suffered the most damage. The other infringed copyrights only support the infringing claims. The $150,000 he's asking for is a punitive amount awarded when someone deliberately distributes copyrighted work with no pretense of it being fair use. So if you're just distributing copies of Disney movies and Disney sues you, they can ask for $150,000 in punitive damages per work. And that's so that they don't that they can enforce their law. Like Disney would not be able to prove actual damages for the downloads to their movies. So they just ask for punitive damages. I, like, I can't show you how many times this movie's been downloaded. I can't show you how much, um, you know, these people pirating, you know, the Beauty and the Beast has cost Disney Company. But we do know that he's doing it, and we do know that there's no use, there's no possibility of this being fair use. So uh, we're going to charge for, we're going to ask for the, the punitive damages of $150,000. He's doing that. I absolutely believe that it's fair use. Uh, he would not fucking win that. No matter what. And he can't prove actual damages because there are not. Nobody would ever fucking pay to listen to his music. And as I said, if he wants to, if this, if this proceeds past the, like the step one, I'll write him a check for a hundred, three hundred and sixty nine dollars for the amount of views that his shitty fucking song has got. One of his shitty songs. I don't know if this is the actual one. Anyways, uh, one sixteen. And this one's interesting. I need Nick to talk to me about this because he might know more. Um, Utah code allows for civil liability for electronic communications harassment. And this is a different count. He's tra he's now saying that I'm civilly liable. My site is also civilly liable for communications harassment under Utah code. I don't know how how I am um, liable under Utah code. That just seems like bullshit. You know what I mean? <clears throat> um. On September 14th, the user BadBoy2000 using Greer's face for his profile picture. And I've never even heard this, and I thought it was a joke at first, but I, apparently this is true. A user, BadBoy2000, using Greer's face for his profile picture, posted an unpublished Holocaust script that Greer never publicly released, October's Uprising. Greer has only ever sent it to a few film agents and two f friends, Greer discovered this on October 26th. Um, so I, I would, I mean, I don't know if that's actually publicly available. I'll have to read it. I, I desperately want to know what a Russell Greer Holocaust manuscript looks like. <laughs> um, 
124, Mr. Moon has liability for the second part of what Mr. Bad Boy 2000 writes. For the mods, please remove this if I broke any rules by posting these. Mr. Moon, a mod raider, never removed it, even though probably seeing it, thus condoning it. That is some tortured-ass fucking logic. The The post said, um, if this, if me posting this manuscript violates my the rules of the site, please delete it. And he's saying, because of that message, by not deleting it, I am now infinitely, specifically, personally liable for it being on the site, which is not how it works. And he said if it broke any forum rules, not if it broke any, like, Utah civil code in the process. Like, if he, maybe there would be some argument if he said, for the mods, at null specifically, so I would get pinged at least. Please remove this post if you think that me posting this uh, personally violates the Utah civil code or uh, communications harassment. And if you don't delete it, you definitely like this post and you think that harassing Russell Greer is cool, especially when it's line crossing actual criminal harassment. Like, maybe if he had wrote that exact statement and then I quoted it and I said, Haha, I love harassing Russell Greer on the internet. That's so funny. Keep doing what you're doing, bad boy 2000, even if it breaks the law. Maybe if that was the correspondence, then maybe he would have an argument, but that's, like, just fucking desperate. <sighs> 128. <laughs> We're getting close, I promise. There are thousands of pages about Greer that are rife with abusing comments by Moon and by his users, some whom have posted Greer's baby pictures saying such cruel and depraved things which Moon has knowledge of. Per the Utah Code, baby pictures would be private information. Moon and his users conduct the con conduct has caught the eyes of local prosecutors, and this I did not know or if he's telling the truth, who have passed a complaint onto the federal agency that handles internet crimes. But the problem arises again with the catching individual users in the CDA shielding Moon. Um, CDA, again, does not shield civil liability. What I think, he, or criminal liability, I think what he's saying is that he tried to complain to, like, the Salt Lake City police, and they said, this is outside of our jurisdiction. Maybe you should file a complaint with the IC3, which is the Internet Computer Crimes Compartment, or whatever the fuck, I don't know what it is. But they, they're like the FBI's division that handles um, very specifically like internet fraud. But I think that's what they suggested and that's what he did. Um, and nothing came of it because there's no actual damage or crime. <clears throat> More recently, one of Moon's users, a girl named Rachel, contacted one of Greer's vocalists for a hit job article on Greer. Moon's users have previously published defaming, quote, articles about Greer and have weaponized those articles. It was very bizarre because Greer never listed the singer's real name, which proves they did something illegal to find it, such as intruding upon Greer's privacy. Also not how it fucking works. Very likely that he did publish it and just didn't realize it. Which uh, we've proven with the fucking dirtbag picture. Okay, now this is a... Oh, we're not there yet. 133. The trolls have skewed internet search results to display articles and statements that trash Greer. Some of these statements are things Greer said years ago and have apologized for. Some were said because he wasn't taking his anxiety medication and is why he made the statements. We all know that if you apologize for something, Google has to delete it and everyone has to forget it exists and archives of that content have to be removed. And if you say something off your meds, the same thing. It's known high court federal law enforced by the FBI and the anti-terrorism cyber divisions the cyber police will ask for you to take down shit if you said stupid things while off your meds. Greer is very hurt and very confused why this war of hate is being waged against him because he looks different. And this is like, again, this isn't a fucking legal argument. Is this supposed to be an argument or like a, a soap opera? Because he looks different. Because he thinks differently. Because he's been in situations that nobody has given the chance to explain. Thus why he wrote the book. Like, come on, <laughs> at least try to act professional. Melinda Scott tries to act professional. He doesn't. And this is count three, false light. I think this one's very short. Um, to state a claim for false light, the plaintiff must prove the following el elements, giving publicity to a concerning a matter concerning another, so talking about someone, that places the other in a false light. And th three, the false light would be highly offensive to a reasonable person. And four, the defendant had knowledge or acted reckless in regard to the falsity of the publicized matter. 
Um, so it, this, I'm bringing this up because and I highlighted this part, the fourth part about how the defendant had knowledge or acted recklessly because he is accusing me of something which I am liable for because it's one of the, the headlines I put on the front of the site. Those are by me. I write them all pretty much. Um, so if something is there and it's false, it's defamatory, it causes damages, and it's those words that I made that this is the only part of the entire lawsuit that actually alleges directly that I did something, which I just realized that there's two paragraph 140s while well, saying that. What a klutz. Anyways, um, this is the only part of the, the lawsuit that actually factually alleges that I said something in my own words that could potentially harm him. The problem is his argument is fucking retarded, and I'll get into that. So I highlighted everything in this, uh, this part. And additionally, um, this part is very concise. You'll notice that the lines are properly numbered. Everything is very concise. Um, it tells the story without his weird gravitons. I don't know what the fuck happened. I don't know if he, if this was written, I think this part was written after his problems in court, which it explains in the actual paragraphs themselves. But I think he got sobered up real fast after he started losing, um, his criminal case. And he wrote this like very, very focused in. So I'll go through this now. Uh, paragraph 140A, to state this claim fully, Greer will quickly explain the situation, which I don't know, maybe you should have just taken this out because it doesn't actually say anything. Uh, 141, during the summer of 2019, Greer met a girl and they became close friends. This girl had many issues, and this is fucking pathetic, this weeping vagina shit right here. Some very concerning, but Greer stuck by her because he has issues of his own, and so he had empathy for her. In October of 2019, the girl randomly exploded on Greer and shamed him with her religion. I don't know what the fuck that means. Greer had no idea what was going on. He had a panic attack and tried reaching out to see to her to see what was wrong. Through the course of three months, Greer sent the girl very polite emails asking her if she was okay, and some of these emails were misconstrued against him. In December 2019, the girl finally replied and told Greer to stop, and he did. Next paragraph, 146, Greer reached out one last time in January 2020 to work things out. The girl went to the police, and a criminal summons for Class B cyber harassment misdemeanor was filed. Um, so the girl asked him to stop contacting him. Next sentence, Greer reached out one last time, and then he she filed a complaint. The really funny thing about this is that he's alleging false light at the same exact time he is being convicted of this crime that he is purportedly made false light in. And it gets even funnier as it goes down. Uh, Greer retained an attorney in March 2020, and that is when he learned of the charge. A plea deal was made in, 20, uh, in June 2020 where Greer, Greer pled no contest and was placed on unofficial probation. If he had stayed out of trouble, the conviction would have been dismissed. Two weeks later, the girl's law, lawyer filed a motion to reconsider the judgment. A new hearing was granted. The girl gave a very one-sided, misleading version of events, which everyone fucking does in court. Stop bitching. Greer wrote a note to his attorney during the hearing that she was twisting the truth. Greer didn't have a chance to share his piece. Because of her testimony, the judgment was set aside, and the court wanted Greer to undergo mental health evaluation. 151. Greer was very fine with the mental health evaluation and the deal. Greer contacted a mental health center and inquired about the cost on July 21st. Greer and his lawyer were fine with the cost and ready to present their mental health plan to the judge. Um, and then 152 on August 4th, a day before the third hearing where Greer would have to make his no contest plea and accepted a mental health eval. Mr. Summers, the prosecuting prosecuting attorney for Orem City, Utah, sent Greer's attorney an email statement. He had learned of new information, parentheses, assuming a troll harassed the prosecutor with slanderous information. And so he was throwing out the plea deal and would make Greer accept a guilty plea with very extreme conditions, not just the mental health evaluations. So someone, apparently, I don't know if they're from the forum or what, but someone sent the prosecuting attorney an, uh, information about Russell Greer, which made the prosecuting attorney go, actually, fuck this guy. Fuck his plea deal. We're going in for the kill. We're going in for everything we can get out of him. And this this whole false light thing is him whining that someone possibly from the forum fucked him in the ass. 
and cheated him out of a very lenient plea deal. <laughs> uh, but it continues, Greer has not yet obtained permission from the prosecutor to show the email as he isn't sure if it's legally privileged communication, but Greer will be happy to provide the email if this court requires it. Couldn't even fucking wait before filing this to get his email. Uh, Greer was devastated when he saw the email. He was sad because he was ready to accept the mental health evaluation and move on with his life. Greer was mad. <laughs> Greer angry. <laughs> because Moon's users once again harassed someone connected to Greer. No, they gave the prosecuting attorney things you didn't want the prosecuting attorney to see. Um, I think what it was, I, and don't quote me on this, this is just me in my shitty brain trying to remember something, but I'm pretty sure he actually spoke about her in public on social media. And I think someone just sent him this message that he posted or this email communication, something like that. Um, that's what I remember, and I'm probably wrong, but just saying. Um, on August 5th, 2020, the hearing was held, and Greer's attorney informed the judge that they would go to a jury trial because Greer could not plead guilty with the added conditions. Rather, he would not plead guilty with the added conditions, so they won a trial. The trolls watched the web-based hearing and took screenshots of it to ruin Greer. These facts set the false light claim and took two claims for false light. I don't know what the fuck that means. Um... This is hilarious because he's saying this is false light. This is a claim of false light. And he basically said that um, he stalked a chick and it got him in trouble. And that's my fault because, because I guess uh, it, it made him look bad. Uh, so this is refusing medication. I guess this is part one of his two claims of false light. So there's two different things which were said that made him have false light. Uh, so refusing medication 159 because the trolls didn't see the prosecutor's email and because it wasn't mentioned at the third hearing, they began recklessly and falsely saying that Greer was refusing mental health treatment, thus portraying Greer in a false light. So this is the one thing um, that I actually said. I post I on the, the featured thread area of the site, I said that Greer was asking for a jury trial. Because he was refusing to take a mental health evaluation, which based on the facts of the case and everything that I knew to be true at the time, was the obvious answer. That's what happened. Um, and I, I say that like that because as it says here, the defendant had knowledge or acted reckless in reckless disregard to the falsity of the publicized matter. There is no way for me to know that he turned down that plea deal for any reason other than the fact he did not want the mental health evaluation. There was no way for me to know that the prosecutor had received new information and was changing, throwing out his own plea deal at the last second. Like, there's no fucking way for me to know that. So, this is all bullshit, obviously, but um, I, I did want to clear that up, why I said that, because as far as I knew, that was the only explanation possible. Um, as it turns out, he was just getting fucked properly. <laughs> uh, 161, thus Moon is now personally liable for spreading false information about Greer by going onto a show. This is uh, him talking about me showing up on Rakita's stream, by the way. Moon is liable because, one, he is giving publicity concerning Greer's court case, which I'm allowed to do as a free person in the freest country on God's green earth. I can talk about fucking court cases. Two, he placed Greer in false light by going onto a show and reiterated the above-mentioned false set of information, which, to the best of my ability, was true. And three, a reasonable person would find it highly offensive to be accused of not wanting mental treatment when Greer did seek out and plan mental health treatment. That's not fucking true. A reasonable person is not mentally ill. And four, Mr. Moon acted reckless in disregard to the falsity by relying on the cliff notes, as Moon put it. That is the exact opposite of reckless disregard. That is me trying my best to be informed about what is happening. Um, and I think this is re referring to... Uh, I don't have this. But he did post the post where I basically asked, Oh, I'm going on Nick's show. I feel underprepared. Uh, can you give me some cliff notes so I can talk with Nick and be more informed? Exact opposite of reckless disregard. I had everything possible to know at that time when I was uh, talking to Nick. So fuck you. Uh, now, this is my personal favorite part of the entire thing. This is so fucking funny that um, I, I, can't, I can't really do it justice. I'm just going to read it, like the entire thing. Quote, victims, end quote. This is the, the title this, for this section. 
163. As with it established that Moon has interacted with the threat on Greer, on the first page about Greer, it states, July 2020, Russell has a date in court with one of his victims, bold italicized, Exhibit A2. Is this Exhibit? No, it's Exhibit A1. Um, Mr. Moon had surely seen the statement and clearly interacted with the case by going on to a show to talk about the case. This places Greer in false light because it is true that he is in a criminal court case. He does not have multiple victims, as the statement alleges. There is only one victim. Absolute, absolute fucking gold. Fucking amazing. Your Honor, I haven't victimized multiple people. I have only victimized one people. And the pluralization of victims has put me in a false light. Therefore, I am owed an obscene amount of money, which I will show you in a bit. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Moon has given publicity to the case and has said in the past that Greer stalks women. Kiwi Farms has misconstrued flirty, friendly, warm conversations as stalking, which is ironically said by a website that stalks people. Exhibit A4 contains some of Greer's so-called stalking behavior. In the exhibit, it is plainly seen that there is respectful conversation going on. There is no perversion, no harassment, no belittling. Um, the fucking criminal case that you have going on right now indicates otherwise that there is some stalking behavior, quote-unquote, going on. <laughs> Though the words... this Knowing this guy is talking about himself, this is a following pro se, has misconstrued friendly, flirty, and warm conversation as stalking like that... Like, that makes me feel like I'm threatened. Like, if I was a woman and I was reading that this guy describes himself as friendly, flirty, and warm, I would be like, oh, that guy is like a rapist. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near him. Uh, that's just my honest personal opinion about reading this fucking case, Russell Greer. That's not me defaming you. I'm not saying you're actually a rapist, but I am saying that if I was a woman, I would feel like he would violate me if I tried to get, if I was alone with you in a room. Uh, 168, Greer has reached out to female celebrities to impress, which is normal for fans to do, but he has never stalked them, which would be showing up at their homes, following their movements, trespassing, etc. He's never done any of that, but you have done that because you're in fucking court facing a, a un unfavorable plea deal for stalking, like literally right now. Uh, <clears throat> Greer is like any other young man. He flirts with women. Even older men do it. Some men are much more crude and disgusting than anything Russell Greer has said. But to single out Greer's behavior is ignoring the millions of others who do the same thing and puts Greer in a false light that he has many victims, as opposed to just one. Mr. Moon has recklessly allowed for that statement to remain on the front page and has spread that Greer stalks women in the past. Greer can't find the exact page, as there are thousands, but he remembered Noel talking about Greer on a thread. The false light has caused a few people to cut off contact with Greer as opposed to the actual ongoing criminal case. These facts set forth a claim of false light against Defendant Moon. And then count for defamation. Uh, 117, 177, since Greer views, or since Kiwi Farms views Greer as a limited public figure. And this is also excellent because if you followed the Maddox case, you would know how important the label public figure is when you're talking about defamation. But here he admits that he is a, a, a public figure. Since Kiwi Farms views Greer as a limited public figure for suing Swift and for advocating for prostitution, Greer needs to show actual malice. So in this, he's really just shot himself in the fucking dick. You never want to say that you're a public figure. He should be vehemently denying that he's a public figure. But instead, he, he takes that burden on himself and says he needs to show actual malice which is easily proven by the fact that Moon is going on to shows and spreading the false information. He was doing it to ruin Greer. Okay, I forgot how great this paragraph was. Actual malice, easily proven by the fact that Moon is going on to Nick Riccata's show and spreading false information. He's doing it to ruin Greer. There's no other reason he's ding it. That's why he runs his website. His site published the information maliciously. His site is malicious. Like, there's no other reason, there's no other possible r fucking reason in the entire world why I, I would be, why I would be talking about this on my fucking podcast or talking to Nick about it. Could it be that it's funny? Could it be that you're a fucking clown and I like making fun of you because you're a fucking clown and you're funny to me? Is that possible? Is that even in the fucking universe of possibility here? 
No. It must be that it's a malicious fucking thing. I, I don't talk with, with Nick because it's fun to do. I talk because I'm so malicious. 181. The handle identifier for Guerrero on his site lists him as a, quote, sex pest and a, quote, sex swift obsessed. Greer is neither. The handle is defamatory because it implies that Greer is a sexual deviant and it intrudes on his sex life. The Swift obsessed statement is defamatory because it implies that he stalks Taylor Swift, which, as explained earlier, he does not, and he has never stalked her, even though he's put out two fucking, you know, like, four different things about her. Um, 182 Kiwi Farms has ruined Greer's reputation as shown, and thus Defendant Moon should be liable for his own defamation and for his users, which is bold. Prayer for relief. This is the money zone. This is what Greer is asking for. Um, this is what he has been trying to prove this entire time that he is owed. <clears throat> Wherefore, Russell Greer prays for judgment against defendants for statutory damages in an amount of $300,000 for contributory con copyright infringement. For claims two through five, plaintiff requests $5 million for reputational and emotional damages, for a preliminary injunction and permanent injunctions enjoining defendants and their users and all persons acting under, in concert with, or for them from continuing to reproduce, distribute, display, disseminate, translate, make available for download, or otherwise use copyright books or song in any manner whatsoever, appropriating or in violation of plaintiff's right copyrights, we request immediate removal of his copyright material, which is Safari Ride, Yo, Yo, Yovana, I Don't Get You, Julianne Smile, Why I Sued Taylor Swift. And I guess October Uprising is not listed in this. He doesn't care about the, the Holocaust book or <laughs> whatever the fuck. Um, for a preliminary injunction that would temporarily... F oh, this is a great part, too. That would temporarily freeze Kiwi Farms for the duration of this case... This injunction is requested because the users conspire and analyze each and every detail about Greer. Greer is nervous that the site as a whole or an individual on the site would retaliate against Greer for filing this lawsuit. This has been proven time and time again as shown in this complaint. Freezing the site would be in the best interest of both parties. Very, very interesting request. <clears throat> Alternatively, if the requested preliminary injunction cannot be given, plaintiff requests a permanent restraining order to have Mr. Moon delete each and every thread on Greer, including any wikis. Attorney's fees and costs for a declaration that the Communications Decency Act does not protect Kiwi Farms or Defendant Moon, dated September 16th, 2020. Respectfully submitted Russell Greer, pro se litigant. Very interesting. Very interesting sign off too. That he, I guess, he wants me to like not like. He's trying to like sacrifice. He's like a hero, man. He's like running in there. He's like, I'll take him on head on, everybody. I'm looking out for all the other people that the site's victimized. I'm gonna get a declaratory relief injunction against the site and Joshua Moon and make it so that the CDA just doesn't apply. I'm gonna take it down. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw myself on the sword and and take down the Kiwi Farm shield so everybody can sue. Him and they'll be gone forever. What a hero. Uh, what a hero. And that's it. That's the lawsuit. Um, there's a lot more to it than what I read. I'll probably go through the entire thing with Nick. Unless he wants to go through and highlight it. That'll be like an eight-hour long stream if you're curious about hearing a more informed opinion. Um, I haven't set a date for it, but I'm sure. I haven't even... He hasn't even told me that it's okay for me to say that I'll be talking to him. Because uh, he hasn't read my messages yet. But... <laughs> I have I have a sneaking suspicion he'll be okay with setting a date for that. Um, now, with that said, I did say that I would play something in respect to Ron Paul before I close out the stream. And I'm hoping I can find a very specific video. Yes, okay. How long is this? Four minutes. Perfect. Excellent. Great time. Great time. This is my first red pill. While dominating the Ames. Listen, and I know, like, this is ingrained in my brain. I remember thinking, I was a big Ron Paul supporter because, d dude, weed, Lamau, like, in 2012, right? Because I, I was a little baby libertarian, right? And um, <clears throat> I remember thinking... Uh, how how much the media did not talk about him and 
when, when he was doing so strong, he was kind of like a little a mini Trump back in the day because he had his big audiences. People would come and see him. They loved him. You know, his supporters were very strong supporters. And when he was doing his his shit, people would just ignore him, even if he was coming in second or third. Right. And I think that Trump saw what happened with Ron Paul and a lot of the crazy shit that he said in 2016 that he backed off on entirely once he got elected was specifically so that the media could not ignore him. And I think a lot, of, a lot of people, especially in Europe, they think that Trump's a fucking idiot and that nothing he does is some plan coordinated, uh, 40 chess type thing. I don't think he's as smart as people on the right give him credit for now, but he definitely knew how to keep the media attention on him. And I think he definitely learned a lesson with Ron Paul. If he didn't say the things he did, he would have fucking hate that that smug fucking chuckle that asshole does at the end of that clip I was like yeah just ignore ron paul we know we know we're fucking evil we don't give a shit we're just gonna completely ice this fucking guy out and there's literally nothing you can do about it <laughs> it makes me it makes me angry ron paul was a good guy he could have saved us could have saved us <clears throat> oh well that's all uh that's all i have um thank you guys for listening i found some vanilla uh, Coke Zero, the store today. I haven't been able to find that in a while, so I'm in a good mood. I got a special song lined up for it. See you guys next week. Wish me luck with my $5.3 million lawsuit. Have, uh, have a nice day. Take it easy. I muted my fucking my browser, so I can't fucking play that song. I had such a great send-off, too, and I fucking ruined it. That's his life. <clears throat> okay, here you go. Bye! Alright, I got a story to tell. So very late at night, when I was making this mixtape, I heard a voice. It was coming from outside, and it was whispering to me. I couldn't quite make it out. But I knew it had a message, and I knew there was something I had to seek out. A special substance, a magical substance that would change my whole world. So I walked down the street, and I found it. Well, it's 10 p.m., I'm feeling listless. No, it ain't no joke. Sitting right on top of my wish list, they I walk out my door, head to George's liquor store, where they always got what I'm looking for, a 20 ounce coke with some sweetness on the side, it's like my life support, had a little fix but I need some more, you can buy happiness I am sure, and it costs 185, pay the man behind the counter, I tell him Mr. Thanks, without your establishment I'd have no coke to drink. Stride along the sidewalk, got no time to talk for real Past the crackhead and I'm thinking, man, I know how you feel Cloudy skies, they all just clear up Got my high fructose corn syrup Life doesn't get better than this Forget a man, all I need is that very first sip Pour it in my red American Idol cup Pour it in my red American Idol cup. Pour it in my red American Idol cup. Pour it in my red American Idol cup. Oh yeah, good. Ah, man. can't get enough of this stuff. I heard somewhere that they discontinued it, but thank God it's back. By the way, Squirtus was the the winning option. People want me to people want me to go hit up Squirtus. I guess I got no chance, no choice. I have to. I'll seek him out. He'll be my Batman. He'll save me from this menace, this mushmouth menace. All right, take it easy.